In Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 6, it says this, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The good news of the gospel revolves around the cross work of Jesus Christ. However, many centuries before these events even took place, a God-given prophecy was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here in scripture we see that these words were spoken of a man who would come. That man was named Jesus. The Son of God would step down, he would step in, and he would step up to the cross. In verse 4 it says, He took our pain and bore our suffering. And here we see the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. We see that he was willing to come and to take our place on the cross, a death that we deserve to die, a cross that we would deserve to be nailed to. He took our place and he was our substitute. The sinless Savior willingly stepped in as our saving substitute. He was our substitute and took the full weight and the righteous wrath of God here we see a, the greatest transaction that we have ever seen. The righteous wrath was initiated because of man's sin problem. Your sin problem and my sin problem. But Jesus stepped in and Jesus was crushed for our iniquities, for our wrongdoing, our sin. Why? Because God so loved the world. John 3:16 tells us so clear. Because God so loved us, he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Because of this, therefore, the genuine Christian can have true peace, knowing that Jesus has accomplished all that he was sent to do by his Father. Therefore, although prophesied many centuries ago, it was always God's plan to send Jesus, his one and only Son, to be the substitute for our sins.